Usually when you grow crystals or crystalline films, you would end up with faceted crystals, which means they have flat surfaces and angles. You would not end with something continuous and smooth and curved. So the discovery was made by a mistake. We were just printing thin films and we let the system run for a longer time. And then we just noticed that beyond certain film thickness, we are starting to obtain very interesting circular features. We thought maybe it was some organism or something that just like got attached to the surface. But then we repeated and repeated a couple of times and then we actually saw that we can control what we are growing so we can control the sizes of those features and how fast they can grow so it was obvious it was not a mistake that it's much something much bigger than that they called them lobes but they, because they're on the scale in between tens of nanometers to a couple of microns even we call them nanolobes essentially they look like um, kind of like hot air balloons that are raising from a surface, but also those molecules inside are ordered. So this is really unique, and this is something you don't see very often. Those films that I'm making can be useful for um, solar cells, for light-emitting diodes, for various types of sensors. And we can do it essentially on any possible substrates. It can be metal, it can be plastic. You can imagine this kind of system can print um, solar cells on a glass, for instance, on a glass that we'll use as a window. If you would call the solar cell with a structure like ours, this would enable, for instance, to filter only the wavelength range that you would need for a specific solar cell. And that can make solar cells much more efficient. Because those materials we are working with are similar to what is used in pharmaceuticals industry, we are also starting to work on drugs printing. So if you would, for instance, would get a film that has very high surface area, it would dissolve in your body much quicker than just a compressed powder tablet. It would be a big breakthrough, especially with drugs that are hard to absorb. So to make the film, we essentially heat up um, material that's inside this part and we have an inner gas coming through the nozzle, picks up the evaporated material and jets it onto the surface. This way you can obtain pretty much any desired pattern. It can be a film, it can be a line, it can be a dot, whatever shape you define. It was quite challenging to build a model that would predict something like this because it's, it's kind of combination of material properties and the technique and the deposition properties. Now we are able also to create rods and platelets and all different features growing using this technology. We're talking about making a ceramic membrane that will conduct lithium ions at rates that allow us to replace liquids used in lithium ion batteries.